When you think of the civil rights movement in Florida, Harry T. Moore's name stands out as a pioneer, activist, educator, and leader. Moore and his wife, Harriet, both died after their Brevard County home was firebombed back in the 50s. Our guest today is president of the Harry T. Moore and Harriet B. Moore Cultural Center, William Gary. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so before we get into the Cultural Center, tell us about Harry T. Moore and his wife. Well, Harry and Harriet Moore, of course, were educators to begin with. Uh, and Harry came to Brevard County around 1925. Uh, he met uh, his wife, Harriet, a year later, and they were married. Uh, and he be taught school for a number of years, uh, being elevated to principal mm -hmm. of the uh, Titusville Negro School. Uh, sometimes later, Harry received some information about the NAACP. And because he had been disturbed about, uh, one, the inequity in teacher salaries there in Bavard County, two, uh, the lack of proper facilities for the black students there, uh, and also he was troubled by uh, the voting situation, that is that black people were not able to vote. So Harry uh, used that information that he had received about the NAACP to establish the first Brevard County branch in 1934. Hmm. And from there, he uh, went about the state establishing branches, uh, eventually establishing some 60 branches and formed the Florida State Conference of NAACP branches. And of course, his wife was always by his side. She was his uh, supporter, compadre, um, a soldier in arms, so to speak, and uh, a stunt supporter of everything that he did, helping him write speeches and deliver those speeches at times where he spoke around the state. Hmm. And tell us the Lockett story. Pardon? Locket, is it? Oh, the, the locket. Uh, there was a locket that uh, Harriet wore, and it was a locket that was given to her by Harriet uh, at some point in their relationship. It, the, the record doesn't say exactly when uh, she received it, but it was a picture of Harry and a picture of her, and she wore that locket all the time. Um, Fortunately, even though the house was bombed, but the locket was found intact, mm. and uh, their daughter, Evangeline, donated the locket to the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History. Mm. So it is on display in the Smithsonian National Museum at this point. And what happened to them ultimately, um, the circumstances around their death? The, the death uh, was that, um, on their 25th wedding anniversary, which was Christmas Day, uh, the Moors had returned home, uh, had a small celebration because they was awaiting the arrival of Evangeline, their youngest daughter from Washington, D.C., who would not get there until the next day. They uh, had some uh, celebration, uh, went to bed, and around 10.20 uh, on Christmas night, Hmm. which was their 25th wedding anniversary, wow. a bomb exploded under their home. Hmm. Uh, the bomb just virtually dismantled the bedroom in the front part of the house. Uh, Harry was fatally injured and died on the way to the hospital in Sanford. His wife, Harriet, uh, she was able to sustain her injuries for nine days, but she died in 1952 right after his funeral. And tell us about the um, Memorial Center and the cultural complex and how those uh, two things honor them. Well, uh, we have to go back, way back to the mid 80s uh, when a, a man named T.H. Uh, Poole Sr. Mm -hmm. was president of the Florida State Conference of NAACP branches. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, each December have this annual Moore Memorial Service. Uh, it was around 1985 that TH inquired uh, as to who owned the property that the old Moore homestead, where it was sitting mm. at. 
and um, Alba Branch went about uh, doing some uh, legal research and found the owners of that property. Uh, TH was able to work with the county, Bavard County, and the property was purchased uh, to make it into a park uh, in honor of the Moors. And that was the beginning of it. The uh, Cultural Center and Memorial Park opened in April of 2004. Hmm. And your work there, tell us about your work and how you came to be involved. Well, um, after the, the Cultural Center opened, um, there were some persons who got together and wanted to have a festival to honor the Moors, and I was asked to serve on that festival's board, their planning board, uh, based on my experience with the NAACP and raising money. Uh, and I accepted that. Uh, a year later, uh, the original president, uh, because of health reasons, had to step down, and I was elected president. And from that point, uh, my main focus has been to uh, complete the park in terms of the other components that was always uh, envisioned there, a replica of the house, mm. uh, <clears throat> the uh, gazebo, uh, we have twin reflecting ponds there with the fountain, we have a civil rights trail with posters of significant events of the uh, civil rights movement, and we have a community pavilion, and uh, during my tenure, uh, working with various state legislators, I've been able to get uh, state grants and we built all those things there now. So uh, everything other than the cultural center uh, was uh, constructed through efforts of the board, mm -hmm. uh, through uh, grants that we worked for. And so now it is about awareness, uh, making the public aware of the Moore story, mm -hmm. uh, teaching students about this history that uh, for so many years has been uh, suppressed and, and lost. And uh, last year, uh, we were able to work with the Bavard County School Board. Uh, we passed a resolution that now there is a curriculum that is being taught in Bavard schools Wonderful. in fourth, fifth, seventh, and tenth grade about the history of the Moors. Along with that, all eighth graders afforded a field trip to the Moore Park and Museum. And last year, we had over 4,000 students come through and learn about the Moors there. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And so the, uh, your annual event is sometime in December. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, the annual uh, Harry T. and Harry B. Moore Gravesite and Memorial Service. And that consists uh, of a gravesite service, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, not very long, but it's held at the LaGrange Cemetery where the Moors and Evangeline are buried. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Rosalie is buried in, in Ocala. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a memorial program, which uh, this year we've invited uh, Mr. Derek Johnson, president of the National NAACP, to speak in December at that memorial program. Wow, and a final tidbit, I know that there's a nexus or a relationship was a relationship between Mr. Moore and Thurgood Marshall. If you, if you could touch on that just for us. So um, we well, yes, uh, that began when Moore, uh, as I said earlier, one of his uh, real concerns was the inequity in teacher salaries, black teachers being paid less than white teachers. And around 1937, Moore and, and some members of the Florida State Teachers Association began talking about filing a lawsuit to try to equalize salary. And, and with that, Moore had corresponded, began corresponding with uh, Thurgood Marshall for advice on how to move forward with this lawsuit uh, at the uh, Florida State Teachers Convention in Jacksonville, 1937. Uh, Thurgood came down to uh, Florida and that was his first meeting with Harry Moore, and from there on began a friendship that lasted until his death. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing this, um, these historical events with us and a bit about the Moore's story, and thank you for your work there at the, um, at the center and with the park. Well, we would like to invite all your listeners uh, and viewers uh, to come and take a field trip uh, to the uh, Moore Memorial Park and Museum. It's at 2180 
Freedom Avenue in Mims, Florida. Uh, our website is www.harryharrietmore, all one word, dot org. Harryharrietmore.org, and you can follow everything that we do on our website. Very nice. Mr. William Gary, thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. We are now more aware of the contributions made by the Moors here in Central Florida. They died fighting for justice during the Civil Rights era. They are also both inducted in the Florida Civil Rights Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm.